Hey guys, it's Scott with Scotty B Cards, and in this video, I want to discuss Fernando Tatis Jr. rookie cards. Fernando Tatis Jr., he is back. He has served his suspension. He was hit with a PED suspension for what he claims was a ringworm medication and what Major League Baseball claims was an anabolic steroid. So that's a little bit of a tough situation. But either way, whether it was an accidental steroid usage, it is now with Fernando Tatis Jr. forever. And that's something we need to just basically accept at this point. One thing I want to point out is the majority of steroid users, when they get hit with the PED suspension, Robinson Cano is a great example. They always say, oh, it was this birth control. Oh, it was this thing that I took and it's the reason why I got hit with the steroid suspension and in Tati's case it was the ringworm medication and he could have been completely truthful that's all it was I know it happened in the recovery period of a broken wrist that he sustained while he was motorbiking which isn't great in the off season but either way it either shows that he was doing steroids or it shows that he just didn't check with his team doctor when he has a multi hundred million dollar contract which is not great either way but there is a real risk that he is being truthful with us but it's unfortunate for his legacy moving forward so I want to discuss how how does that impact his cards? Is it really going to hurt his cards? Are his cards going to be just fine? Because it was in the off season and not during his playing time, is that going to be a big deal? So let's talk about Fernando Tachi Jr. We'll do some stats really fast, legitimately quick, so we can get into the card talk here. But I just want to show you that he has about 13.4 war in his age 24 season. It was 13.4 war after his age 22 season, and unfortunately, he did have injuries and then the PED suspension. Overall, though, his career OPS plus is 158 for who was a previous shortstop player. He has now moved to right field. So his defensive value is not nearly as valuable as a position, unfortunately, because he's not at shortstop. But his OPS plus will translate regardless of what position he plays. In 2021, he finished top three in the MVP voting, the 166 OPS plus and led the leagues in home runs. That's insane. He was a very talented player that year, and he's still a very talented player. Prior to coming back to the big leagues, he had a very great couple weeks in the minor leagues where he hit like 15 home runs and 15 at-bats. Not exactly. I'm being dramatic but he was very good and that's because he's a good ball player. He's really struggled since he's been back. This little thing I cut out on his baseball reference page was a few days ago. He hasn't actually done any better since I took this screenshot, but it's been more than four games at this point. Overall though, I want to point out he has a 958 career OPS, 158 OPS plus, 290 batting average, and he averages 48 home runs for every 162 games played. Stats are good. His ceiling is high. His Hall of Fame statistics, I only want to point out that he averages around 7.9 war for every 162 games played. That's elite elite. Mike Trout averages around nine war because he's Mike Trout. Mookie's around 8.2. Tatis is 7.9. So other Hall of Famers that are in the shortstop position average around 4.9 war for 162 games played. On top of that, his percentile rankings, these are from Baseball Savant. This means he's in the 90th percentile of average exit velocity, meaning he hits the ball harder than 98% of Major League Baseball. He runs faster than 96% of Major League Baseball. He literally has the hardest arm strength for an infielder in Major League Baseball. His defense is above average. This is all in 2021. We see him chasing and missing a lot. Not very surprising. Usually the eye comes with age for players like Tatis as they change their batting approach as they age. But overall, that is who he is. Really high ceiling, really exciting player. And that's why people love Fernando Tatis Jr. Now let's talk about his cards. Sports cards are an interesting topic and baseball is its own beast when it comes to trading cards. Basketball and football are generally a little bit more forward when it comes to young players. Baseball can be confusing for some collectors that are kind of just, you know, coming in and kind of being casual fans. And that's okay. We love casual fans. Welcome to Scotty B Card. Subscribe. But overall, it's tougher to follow what's going on. And Tatis is throwing some people for a loop a little bit because he was high. This is his overall market. This is nothing in particular. We'll get actual cards in a moment. But you can see this index is incredibly high. Then he has the big drop this last summer from the steroid suspension. And then we do see him starting to increase and rebound right now. So the question is, is he going to get back to these levels? Should you buy his cards to try to time this? Or is he going to ring flat or drop moving forward? So let's Let's look at some of his cards. One thing I love about Tatis, I think Topps did a great job with his rookie cards, his rookie year. If we could have a majority of players be like Tatis, his cards were plentiful enough that people can collect them, but not too plentiful where you're like, what freaking short print do I buy? His cards are muy bien. And that's why I do like his Topps Chrome Sapphire card. He doesn't have an image variation like we see with a short print with Julio Rodriguez. He does have like image variations of his base card, but it's different than the short print of Julio Rodriguez being his old 
only Topps Chrome rookie. On top of that, it does match his flagship image with his Topps Chrome Sapphire. Same with his Topps Chrome base card and his Topps flagship base card. But this card in particular, it's a pop 340, so it's not really that rare. It's a great card, one of his best, but not that rare. And the last few that have sold are $2,500, and this one is about $2,000. Before that, they had dropped to around a thousand bucks for a PSA 10. We saw that these were around $5,000 pretty consistently, and then they dropped a little bit, and then the PED suspension made them tank to where they are now. But regardless, these are obviously moving back up. The same situation can be said for his Bowman Chromatograph. This base Bowman Chromatograph was actually going for around four to $5,000 at Tatis's peak. They dropped all the way to only about 1200 bucks, and that's basically where they are sitting now, but we're starting to see some movement upwards as he has come back from the suspension. One thing I wanna point out is $1,200 for a Bowman Chrome Autograph base card is really high in comparison to other players. I wanna show you this because you're going to see that that's basically higher than Bryce Harper, Nolan Arenado by $500. So even though his cards have dropped from $5,000, yeah, they've tanked in regards to percentage for people who bought at the peak. While he had not received a PED suspension for steroids, regardless, he is still higher than two-time MVP Nolan Arenado, two-time MVP Bryce Harper, 10-time Gold Glove winner Nolan Arenado, and five or six-time Silver Slugger Nolan Arenado. And it makes you wonder, does that make sense? That he's missed so much time due to injury and a PED suspension, and he has that PED suspension. Should he be worth more than these players? I'll let you decide that. Now let's look at where he's at in comparison to those players in regards to a career perspective. This top line is Mike Trout. He's just Mike Trout, man. At age 24, he had 47 war while everybody else the next highest was Bryce Harper at 26. Juan Soto will probably pass Bryce Harper in war this year if he can figure it out, which he will, but we'll see if he actually does. And someone like Aaron Judge didn't even debut until age 24 and is worth negative 0.2 war in his cup of coffee in the big leagues before his full season at age 25 in 2017. So it helps to have this early start because he's already 14 war ahead of Aaron Judge, but overall he's still well behind Bryce Harper, Juan Soto, Mike Trout, Mookie Betts even. All these players are so far ahead of him at the same age because he has missed time for various things. And regardless, he'll say, well, you know, the COVID 2020 season that hurts his numbers at a young age, that is very true and it's unfortunate. But when you look back at these players 30 years from now, people won't necessarily be talking about that. A lot of great players like Ted Williams and Willie Mays, they missed time for military service and it didn't really affect all of their numbers necessarily. There are some I'm sure we can point to, but no one really talks about that as being a major part of their history. And they probably won't do that for any of the modern players as well for that same purpose. That might be something they mentioned, but regardless, it's going to be what is the total body of work in comparison to others. And that's why baseball is beautiful because we can compare stats so easily, unlike basketball or football, where it's more the eye test, which I love the eye test, but it's too much the eye test for those sports. So you can look at this and make whatever you think from this. It does show how crazy Aaron Judge has been this year in particular, that oh, almost 11 war season. Good job, Aaron. Great season. Now let's talk about should you buy his cards? Should you invest in his cards? I want to talk about the good. Tatis is one of the most exciting baseball players we've seen in 30 years. And I know that sounds dramatic, but he is very good at baseball and you can share what he does, his highlights, his home run celebrations, the way he acts and the way he pimps home runs and all these different things. People love that. And for that purpose, he's going to have hobby value and collectability for the foreseeable future. He has really straightforward cards, which I do like. I love that about him because his cards make sense and they're easy to collect and easy to know what you're buying. It seems like people are becoming more lenient on steroid users. I think there needs to be a line drawn though, because I think the leniency is going towards Barry Bonds and Roger Clemens and those type of players where it was frowned upon at the time and it was technically against the rules, but there wasn't like a suspension. It was like, hey, don't do it. I'm gonna look this way, but don't do it, man. That's more of what it was like. And then the rules came later. That's why someone like Alex Rodriguez, who actually received a PED suspension multiple times, Robinson Cano, players like that, it hurts a lot more than someone like Barry Bonds, who yes, he did cheat, and it's pretty obvious at this point, but he never really failed a drug test. The only drug test he really failed and received a suspension for was supposed to have been an anonymous test that got leaked later. David Ortiz has ties to that same test. For some reason, he still got to the Hall of Fame. So maybe that leniency will get to Tatis as he ages, and we won't care anymore. People will also say, hey, it was during a recovery period. He actually didn't take steroids while he was playing. That might be true. I still think people are going to speculate based off of his early success and performance, especially if you can't replicate it moving forward. He might've been taking it during his playing time, but he didn't get caught. And on top of that, it doesn't matter. He still cheated to get back to Major League Baseball in a lot of players' eyes. But for some people, they can justify it that way. And But regardless, he did receive that suspension. So who knows if anybody will really be forgiving of that, especially baseball writers who are very traditionalists and purists. If they don't let Barry Bonds in, if they don't let Alex Rodriguez in, Fernando Tatis Jr. is not going to be as good as them. I don't want to break 
it to you collectors, but Barry Bonds stats are so much better than Tatis can ever really dream of, especially at this point. And for that purpose, I have a hard time visualizing Tatis getting in, even if it was during a non-playing time. But even if he did not take the steroids, it's just as so unfortunate, this whole situation. I actually feel bad for him if he didn't take the steroids. We've all been young. I'm 28, so you can still claim I am young. We make poor decisions. And maybe he really had ringworm from a bad haircut. And he took this stupid over-the-counter cream. And it's unfortunate he got hit with an anabolic steroid. But regardless, anything he takes, he has a medical team doctor that he's supposed to run every single thing by them. If he had ran this by the team doctor and then got hit with the PED suspension, it would have been the doctor's fault. I'm like, oh gosh. And he could have appealed it and none of it would have happened. But regardless, he was a little bit careless and it showed that carelessness as well in the off season where he hurt his wrist on a dirt bike. And all these things are a little bit unfortunate for Tatis and his image, whether it's fair or not, it's the media and the media can be very cruel. He has injury history, shoulder problems, wrist problems. I think both are actually behind him now. This is less concerning to me personally, injury history, but it still has been a part of his career. I personally did not buy Tatis cards before the steroid situation. So that probably means I'm not going to be buying Tatis cards after the steroid situation. I bought Soto, I bought Acuna in place of Tatis. I believed in them more and their style more. And I thought Tatis was great, but I just stuck to those players because that's who I liked more. There was no other reason than that. I thought Tatis was a decent buy at the time as well. There are other players players right now that I think are better buys than Tatis who do not have any scandals attached to them. So for that purpose, Scott is not buying Tatis cards, but if you want to, any baseball player can have increases at any time based off of performance. Even if someone did steroids, it's one of those things where his cards could spike in the short term. In the long term, the traditionalist collectors, I don't know if they'll ever want his cards, and that will be a tough hill to climb, especially where, again, his cards are just as expensive, if not more expensive than almost no doubt Hall of Famers at this point. So do what you will with his cards. I just wanted to share my thoughts on the situation. It's so good to have him back because he's good for Major League Baseball to be exciting. And the drama is always good for clicks and social media shares. So glad he's back. But I just want to share my thoughts. Let me know what you think in the comments below if you like Tatis, if you're buying Tatis, selling Tatis, and what your thoughts are on the steroid suspension. And I will see you in the next video.